Hi guys, my name is Vidhi Kamra Balana and welcome back to my channel 5 Minute Economics where I teach economic concepts in a span of just 5 minutes. Well, the topic for today is, trust me when I say interesting, it is one very interesting topic which is known as the Cornot model of oligopoly and I'll be covering this entire topic in this limited time span. I'll be covering the diagrams, explanations, um, you know, whatever you need to know about this example. Plus, I will also be doing the differences between Stackelberg and the Cornot's model. I've already shot a video on the Stackelberg's model. I'll attach its link in the description below. And uh, yeah, let's get started. Also, guys, please don't forget to like this video and do subscribe to my channel in case you haven't already. And also follow me on my Instagram handle 5 Minute Economics for some fun content. So coming to the introduction as well as the assumptions of this model, guys. So as the name suggests, this model was given by Augustine Cornot and hence the name Cornet's model of oligopoly. So in case you don't know oligopoly, please refer to my video. The link is in the description. But just in brief, I'll tell you, oligopoly is a market where there are few firms. There are barriers to entry and exit. And basically, there is obviously a lot of competition between the firms because there are just a few number of firms. Okay. So I will be coming to the example, but first let me tell you what happens in this model. Basically in this model, guys, we are talking about two firms who are working on producing identical goods. Okay, whatever they are doing is exactly the same. So firms produce identical products independently and simultaneously. Okay, they are producing, let's talk about Aquafina and Bisleri. Okay, the two companies producing water exactly the same, right? And they both know that there are rivals and both know like changes in their price quantity will definitely have an effect on the rival so they know that what's going to happen if i do any change simultaneously please focus on this word because here we are working on a simultaneous model last time we did a stackleworks model which was a, a sequential model first the leader did and then the followers did but here it's just simultaneously happening okay so let's see the assumptions as well as you know the explanation of this uh, model two firms were producing high identical or homogeneous that is exactly the same good okay here they compete in a in quantity rather than prices so quantity is the uh, key what we are going to be talking about and then of course they have perfect uh, information about demand about their rivals their rivals inventory cost all of that market demand cost of production they are all aware of it you know uh, some features are of a perfect competitive market basically there is no competition between firms because of uh, their rivals. How will there be any uh, cooperation? Sorry if I said competition. No cooperation between firms. They are working as rivals. And lastly, they cannot collude or form cartels because if they do collude or form cartels, uh, it will become a whole different model, which maybe we can do sometime later. But uh, here they are not, you know, colluding or being like, chalo milke ek party bana lete. Nahi, dono alag party hi rehne wali hai. They are not going to collude. They are BJP Congress maybe. So that way it is there, guys. Here, one very important point which I've highlighted in blue is that companies consider how much quantity the rival is going to produce to maximize their profits. They are aware of what the rival is doing. They have to see, you know, they know what's going to happen, the reaction, what's going to come. So they do their production accordingly. So these are the key features of a Cornot's uh, model. Now, guys, the most important or the crux of the whole model I'm going to be explaining to you. Just take a whole screenshot if you want to take or, you know, um just zoom in this for so that you know you can actually see the whole board what i'm going to explain now so quickly guys come let's get started one of the few assumptions uh one of the assumptions what i've told you you all know now coming to the most important thing which i have to tell you is that each firm will produce half of what the rival will produce so this is one big assumption this is one thing which we have to keep in mind if a is producing whatever a is producing if for example 100 b is going to produce 50 half of what a is going to produce and so on and so forth okay so let's start it with some numbers don't like numbers much but don't worry they are very simple so one is what one is our market demand so here we have assumed that the entire market demand is one and what is firm a going to so we're taking two firms a and b a is going to obviously produce half of the market demand so one minus half is giving us half so what is a going to produce a is going to produce half now, before I go ahead, this whole block, this black box, which I've put, just memorize it. But actually, I'll explain you also, but just memorize it in case you can't understand. Here, guys, in a situation, when demand is more than supply, price and profits rise. Okay, very simple. You know, when um, your price is over, tomato, you know, like we see there's so much of shortage. That case, the demand of 
onion is much more in the market than the supply is red, right? In that case, we see that the prices go skyrocket. We, we know that that time, you know, onions are so much of 80 rupees kilo, 100 rupees kilo, all of that we've seen. And in that case, of course, the profit for the producers is a lot. So when demand is more, the price and profit rises and vice versa when supply is more the price and profit falls so be crystal clear with this guys in this case we see a produces half now seeing that a has got you know is producing half and earning profit we jumps into the market we get there maybe the market mein dekhu, you know what is going to happen in the market now we notice how much will b produce b will produce one minus half basically you know half already is the available um uh, market demand is half because half to A already leg hai. Half bacha hai, right? Half bacha hai. Ab us half ka guys, we have to do half of it. That is B is going to produce one fourth. One fourth of the market is uh, what B is going to produce. So come on guys, I've written it also so that you remember this. A ka jab profit zada hota hai, B joins in as, as I just told you. When B increases production, what happens is supply increases. Demand, of course, remains constant. In that case, we notice supply is greater than demand. And in that case, as I told you, when supply is greater, price and profits falls. Now, what happened? Now, price and profit both have fallen. So, what will A do? A says, chalo, I will production kam kar deta. A will come and reduce production. Now, how much will A produce? A will produce 1 minus 1 fourth. 1 fourth to already B le gaya, right? Well, that is available market demand. I've written MD, AV. That is available market demand is 3 fourth. A will produce half of 3 fourth, that is 3 eighth A will produce. So A basically reduction, production come kar hai, supply falls, demand rises. Again, we've reached to this box that when demand is more than supply, price and profit rises. Again, we will now come in the market. So this whole cycle actually will keep on continuing. Half, 1 fourth, 3 eighth, 5 16, I've not shown it, but if you just do it, you know, 3.8 ke baad 5.16 aata hai jo B produce kar rahe. So basically we will come to a conclusion till we reach an equilibrium point when both are producing one third of the market. Here we've come to this part. Both are giving one third because they are producing inter uh, dependently. They are not, you know, they are doing apne apne mein. They are not, you know, they are doing it uh, on it what they want. They are not seeing, you know, if we can collude together, they can actually do much more. But of course, they don't want to. So, one third equilibrium. Mein, firms maximize their profit at one third equilibrium. But we notice that industry profits are not maximized. Industry profits would be maximized if both are doing half half. Jo otherwise, if they would have, you know, joined hands together, they would have. So in this case, in this Cornot's oligopoly model, we notice guys that they are producing more than what monopoly may ho sakta tha, but less than what perfect competition may ho sakta tha. And prices are ultra, prices are less than a monopoly and more than a perfect competition. Okay, so this is basically the structure coming to the diagram quickly guys. Again, the whole market demand is OD. This is the X axis where we are taking quantity. Here is the price. OD is the total market demand, which is one. Uska half OQ hai, jo A produce kar hai. These lines, these black and green lines are MR, marginal revenue curves, which are negatively sloping. You can see guys, A is producing at OQ quantity. It has OP price, right? This red one is the A ka production. How much is B going to produce? Half of A, as I just told you. Now B ka production kitna hoga? This QD me se beach ka B hoga. As we notice, B comes in the market, the price falls. And you know, the cycle keeps on going. Now we've moved down. So this is what B is producing. So basically this whole thing, I've put it in a very simple diagram for you to understand. So I hope you're clear, guys. So quickly running through the advantages and limitations of this model, guys. So advantages is, of course, it gives us very logical results. If you see the price and quantity lie between a monopoly market and a perfect competitive market. In case you don't know these, I've made a video on types of market. I'll attach this link in the comment section below. Uh, then we are coming to Nash equilibrium. Of course, guys, um, that one third what I just spoke about, that is the equilibrium. Actually, it is a Nash equilibrium. Uh, if you are talking about game theory, they, Nash equilibrium, basically, they have reached a point where both are very happy. You know, they don't want to, you know, change or deviate from that one third equilibrium. So that is the Nash equilibrium. Again, if you don't know what is Nash equilibrium, I made a video on it. Again, attaching its link below, guys. Limitations quickly, yes, uh, the strategy is what they said, you know, that if there are two firms, they're working independently, that's actually not true in real life. You know, if they're just two firms, they know each other's strategy. They, it's not possible in practical life. Secondly, veterans model, which we're going to be studying next, said that, you know, uh, 
price is the main variable and not quantity and over here you see that price has been actually ignored quantity is the main variable and lastly guys homogeneity is not possible even if i took an example of aquafina and bisleria so those two bottles if you look at them the packaging the shape the you know whatever the description what it's written it will be different so it's very difficult to have actually exactly same or identical products so lastly guys as promised let me come to the similarities and difference between the two models Stackelberg and Cornot of course the major similarity in the two models is output maximization both the firms major goal is to maximize their output coming to the very interesting differences guys uh, timing of course if you study both the models you are the one who can easily tell me the difference rather than me telling you that in a stackle in the Stackelberg model we saw that there's sequential decision making one after the other okay ek ke baad ek. Whereas in a Cornot's model, we saw that there's simultaneous decision making, ek saath dono decisions, uh, dono firms decision make kar rahe. So that is the major difference. Expectation, of course, we saw reaction firms played a very important role in Stackelberg model. Yes, here in Cornot, they're not bothered about the reaction firms. Lastly, guys, market power in the Stackelberg model, model, that initial move advantage that for a leader firm definitely has much more market power. Whereas the core knots model, we see there's less market power because of taking uh, simultaneous decisions together. So this is all about uh, core knots model of oligopoly, guys. I hope this video was useful for you. If it was, please do comment in the video and I'll come uh, back with my new video, which will be veterans model. So stay, stay tuned, guys, and I'll see you in the next video pretty soon.